Hey friends, I cannot believe I've been making videos for all this time and I've never covered this machine. But that changes right now. Okay, so the word legend is bandied around quite a lot these days. But this machine is truly an absolute legend. A lot of people love this cleaner and you can completely and totally understand why. And that machine is, of course, the incredible, the beautiful, the brand Electrolux 345. Well, what a machine. So just just to give you a brief history of, of this cleaner. So if we go back to 1970, um, Electrolux were producing the 310. That was their sort of main core machine at that time. It was the, they had a, like a, a, a twin level, um, or was it, was it triple level at that time? I get a bit confused, I'm sorry, because you know when you try and hold all this history in your mind, it all tends to get a bit muddled up. But Lux used to do a, like a, a triple level or twin level, I, I can't quite remember, where you had the luxury machine at the top, then you had the mid-range machine, and then you had uh, the budget cleaner underneath. I've covered this in videos previously. In 1970, 310 was the top of the line luxury machine. Then 310 was replaced in 1973 by model 330. And then 330 was itself replaced only two years later, in 1975, by 345. So this then became Lux's top of the line machine. So if we, if we like anchor ourselves and say, I don't know, 19, 1978, say, uh, the luxury machine was 345, the mid-range machine was 302, and then I think 87 was the budget line. So this was, you know, the ultimate luxury Electrolux of the mid to late 1970s. It had a surprisingly long production run, certainly longer than its uh, older brother, the 3 330. From memory, 345 ran from 1975 to 1983. Now I could be slightly out there is it's a bit tricky sometimes to work out exactly when machines started and ended because as I understand it 345 was itself replaced by 350 so 350 was the direct replacement for this cleaner and you can see that because um, you know 345 has a metal uh, body section 350 does not it's all plastic so it would have been cheaper to make but some records say that 345 actually went on until 1983 which doesn't really make any sense it's it's all very it's all very mixed up and that's what these uh, vacuum companies were doing at the time i always say at hoover hoover had completely lost the plot by the time the 80s rolled around but Lux were not that much far behind them. I mean, if you're producing all these models, um, I suppose it becomes cheaper over time to create a machine that you've already created. It would then become a, a more budget machine. You could put it on sale, so you'd still have the sales, but you'd probably make less money, but it was cheaper to produce. It's all interweaved with the um, economies of scale and all that nonsense. But anyway, I'm not going to dive down that rabbit hole. I really want to talk to you about this uh, cleaner. Um, this one is actually for sale. Um, it's going to go onto eBay very shortly. I'm hoping it's gonna do quite well, as it is a really nice example of a 345. And one I sold previously, uh, that was pretty much the complete set. I, I won't say how much that went for, but it went for good money. I was quite shocked, actually. So ho hopefully, hopefully, fingers crossed, this one will too. I have always had a particular affection for this model and the reason for that is because it's one of my childhood vacuum cleaners. I think it would be 
surprising if it wasn't for a lot of people um, because they were very popular cleaners. I used to see them in my friend's shop all the time. There was always one in and I started working there in 1990. There was always at least one 345 or one 330 in that shop in to be fixed. And most of the time you could fix them. The only thing that really kills these off is if the motor fails. And as I've shown you in pre previous videos, th 345 uses the same motor as 330, um, as 350. It's that semi-sealed Electrolux unit. And the only thing that ever really kills them is if the top bearing goes or the, or the bottom, bottom bearing goes. But they're, you know, they're really good hardy motors, so they went on for years. Obviously, this one has been retired for some time. Um, and it's one of the ones that I got from Richie. So yeah, my childhood memories of this cleaner is my Uncle Limbud and Auntie Barbara. They were, <laughs> they're from the rich side of the family. Limbud did really well. He did really well for himself. He was my dad's brother. Um, and uh, they had a uh, horrendous childhood. I won't go into that now, but it was horrendous. And Limbud had a drive to get out of that grinding poverty, and it was grinding poverty. So he went off and he made a real uh, su su success of his life. And uh, they're still with us, Limbud and Barbara. They're well into, into their 80s now. But I can recall go, going around to their house when I was a kid, and uh, it's a massive house. Oh God, just unbelievably gigantic. And in the understairs cupboard, one of the understairs cupboards, uh, they had a 345 with the woven hose. And in their gigantic dining room, right down the air, so you went in the door. So you came into the house, you went into a large hallway, well, a foyer really. And if you turn right past the fireplace, there was a fireplace in the foyer you went into the dining room and the dining room was like twice the size of this dining room here twice the size and probably an extra third in width the table in there was i think it was at least a 12 place setting table with this uh, gigantic sideboard you went in the door you turn right there's the table there's a sideboard to your right massive sideboard down the end the cat's here again go away right down the end Hiding behind the sideboard was a, a Hoover Ranger U4014, the same machine as used in the Shake and Back adverts. Because the house had a mixture of hard, and, uh, hard, hard floors and carpets, Barbara, because she always did the cleaning, would use the, the Ranger on the carpets and the 345 on the hard floors and for the stairs. And I have such happy memories of going there and using their Lux and their Ranger uh, in this gigantic house going around vacuuming all these acres of carpet, acres of carpet, just absolutely amazing, real, real happy memories. Uh, sadly, very few happy memories because they're a strange bunch, um, but let's not go into that. So that was, I think, probably the first time that I saw the three, three, four, five, um, and I've loved it ever since. I have one in my uh, collection upstairs. It's on... Um, it's actually by the staircase. You would have seen it in the previous video when I was up in the attic. I think that one's from 1977, if memory serves. And it has the earlier style uh, bag full um, selector on it. So this being a later machine from 1980 has numbers. And that machine upstairs has the stripes, which 330 had. Um, so yeah. 330 had red stripes, 345 has sort of like a orange-yellow stripes on it. Or in the case of this machine, numbers. As I say, this machine is for sale, so I, I really want to give you um, an overview of it so people who see the auction on eBay can come here and then they can see it and they can see it working as well. Overall, the machine is in really nice uh, nick, actually. It's come up lovely. The only thing to mention on it is, if I turn it around, there is a piece of plastic missing here. It's just had a little nick at some point. You can see there that the uh, the, the plastic's broken off um, at, at that point. 
which is a real shame. But you know, it doesn't make a huge difference. It's only a small piece of plastic, but there we go. Um, it's very unlikely that, that the automatic uh, bag full indicator, sorry, no, not indicator, the automatic bag full shut off still works. They, they used to break for a pastime. Um, a, a lot of the time when these came in to my friend's shop to be fixed, we actually had to, to take out the um, micro switch mechanism at the back here. So how this works, actually I'll tell you, I'll tell you how it works. It's very clever. It is very, very clever. So this dial here, which goes one, two, three, four, five, six. So that's actually a pressure setting dial. In behind here, in the front of the machine's head, just get that bag out of the way. There's a pressure sensing mechanism and you can kind of see it. Let me let me rotate this round so you can see it. So there's a little rubber grommet here and that um, abuts to this hole here, which is um, cast in the, I guess, ad aluminium plate. Now this actually senses what pressure is happening uh, be behind the bag, if it's high or low suction pressure. Um, as the bag fills, the pressure in the bag chamber will increase. So that's how, that, that's how the machine knows that the bag is filling or indeed full. Now, when you change this dial on the front, see the dial there, you're actually setting at what pressure the mechanism fires at. So basically, <laughs> I'm just going to try and explain this. There's a little plastic tab here. Just about to see it. Let me let me let me do it like that. There we go. There's a little plastic tab here. So this tab um, pushes into the face of the dust bag. Okay. Now this is like a, a fail-safe mechanism. If you don't have the bag in place, this tab will not push on it. It'll be out like that, and it means the machine won't start. So it's like a safety mechanism. You can't run the cleaner with no dust bag in it. That's very clever. But what happens here is when this um, pressure mechanism is fired, uh, when the pressure in the bag chamber reaches a certain point, it basically unlocks, it kind of flicks itself open. Now you see here there's a little metal piece sticking out. And you can push that back and forth. It's under quite a lot of pressure. It's not, it, if you did that a few times it would, it would hurt your finger. Now this rod runs all the way along here. To, to the back of the cleaner. And at this point, mounted on the rear motor bracing plate is a micro switch. And this rod comes around and it bends round um, and then this little rubber pusher moves back and forth. Now I think it's, if the switch is open, the machine will run. If the switch is closed, the machine will stop. And that's the key bit. So this little piece of plastic here, when it fires, this will release at the back. This rod will pop out because it's sprung loaded, push into the switch and break the contact. So the machine stops. It's really clever, but really over complex. Um, the whistling mechanism of the earlier machines was much, much uh, simpler. And what used to happen was, and I've heard stories of this from my friend um, who's been in the trade for a long, long time. When people used to buy these new, um, they never read the book for them. They never read the instructions. They never really understood how this automatic shut-off system worked uh, and what it was for. People would probably think that this rotating dial here with the numbers or the stripes was for some kind of suction control mechanism, um, but obviously it was not. Um, so they were merrily vacuuming away with their brand new cleaner, which would have cost a fortune. I mean, this would have cost an absolute fortune in 1975. I don't know exactly what it was, but you could, you're probably looking at many hundreds of pounds if you put the original sales price of this cleaner through uh, in, in inflation over the past, God, 45 years. It was a lot of money. So they spent all this cash, they're vacuuming away, la, 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 and then all of a sudden their brand new vacuum cleaner stops. It stops, it just stops dead. And then this check bag light 
comes on. Now what is quite misleading about this is that even when the machine is off, so when it's off normally, this check bag light is on and it turns off when you turn the machine on. It's really quite arse backward. Um, so yeah, so the brand new cleaner stops and they're like, oh, I just spent like £400 on this and it's it's not working and the, just the power switch and this light would just stay on and be like, what's going on? What's happened? But of course, didn't realise that the machine is doing exactly what it is supposed to. Um, so yeah, I always find that quite funny. You spend all this money, you use it once and it stops. So people would bring these back. They they would take them back to the shops where they bought them. Things not, not working, I've been done wrong. And um, people were trained to say, actually, it's probably your bag fault mechanism. So you, if you if you just open the front and, sh and shut it again, it will reset. And you press the power switch and off it goes. <laughs> really quite funny. Um, but yeah, so that's, that's like a little overview of it for you. Um, as I say, it's a really nice neck. There's not much else to uh, talk about on the main body of the cleaner. But I do want to talk about the tools. Because if you're going to bid on this, you need to know everything. So I'm going to pop him down there. Um, we'll take him out for a, a run shortly. Now, it does come with the original uh, automatic floor tool, which is great, nice to see. This works perfectly fine. As you can see, the brushes go in and out. If I do it like that, brushes go in and out. Um, so when you're vacuuming carpet, uh, this uh, metal area is sealed and the suction runs through a couple of little channels inside the head there. I'll show you like that, there's a little couple of channels, which create a vacuum in the top of the head. And because the brushes are mounted on a uh, rubber, rubber bellows, I guess you call it, um, the suction pulls the brushes in and you vacuum your carpet. When you're on hard floors, this area is not sealed. Um, there's not enough airflow to suck the brushes up and the brushes are down. But this works perfectly fine. The only thing is, because this is like the business end of the cleaner, it's had 40 years it just amazes me that it's 40 years old. Um, the, the furniture guard on the head is starting to wear out. So you can see there's a little bit, there's bits missing. It's still sealed. It's perfectly fine. It functions beautifully. But I just want you to be aware that on the front of the head, um, the guard is starting to wear off. This, this rubber goes hard over time um, and it can be easily chipped. But there we go. One of those things I'm afraid that's age for you. The other thing is the hose. So this machine is, uh, as I say, from 1980. So it's got the original woven hose. Now we've covered these in the past on the channel. Uh, the one on the 310 was particularly bad and that had completely broken down inside. This one, for the most part, is actually airtight. I'd say it's 90 to 95% airtight. The only issue with it, if I hold this up to you there so you can see it, it's starting to go here, just where it starts to join uh, the bent end. And you can see there's an indentation at this point. And you can actually feel the air leaking here. You can feel it across this section. Funnily enough, when it's in use and it's hanging like that, as that's how you would have it, like that, it pretty much seals itself. So you can use it like this. Uh, it's 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 fine, it's functional, but you know, in being completely honest with you, I just want to tell you everything um, about this cleaner. So what I would say is, and I'll put this in the auction listing as well, if you wanted to make this last a bit longer, just put a couple of wraps, probably about an inch or so, maybe an inch and a half of um, PVC electrical tape around this. That will that will give it a bit more seal at that point and it'll add some strength to it as well. It's still it's still held in place. This is this is not gonna break away, it's not gonna break off, you're not gonna be left holding a bent end with your hose over there. It's not gonna break off, but it will gradually over time with more use start to get worse. So yeah, just put some tape around that, give it a bit more uh, strength to it. So that's that, and then of course you get the rod as well. And the rod's not in too bad nick. Um, it's got some marks and uh, scratches on it, but it's not too bad. I've seen a lot worse. There's no dents on it, which is quite 
unusual and the ends are still quite round and it hasn't been like smacked into things but that's the toolkit you get with it you get the hose the rod and the floor saw there are no other small tools with this machine uh, and i think in conclusion that is about it let's bring this beauty back up so we can see it over here like so um yeah all in all to conclude a really nice example of the th 345 couple of little issues with it nothing too much i just meant to check actually when it was when in 1980 so it's the 39th week of 1980 so we're talking what september from around september 1980 yeah quite quite late quite late in the run um but then of course we have the out outstanding question of was it replaced in 81 um, and then finally killed off in 83 or was it killed off in 81? But let's not go down that rabbit hole, as I say. But yeah, there we go. Um, hope you like it. Hope you've enjoyed this talk through of it. It is one of my most favourite cleaners. I wonder if it is actually... No, it's not my most favourite cylinder vacuum cleaner. Um, probably my most favourite Electrolux cylinder vacuum cleaner yeah yeah i would give it that title in my list of love and that's probably why i've rambled on about it for so long i don't normally talk this long uh my my throat's going dry and i need a drink but yeah anyway let's leave it there um hope you've enjoyed it let's take it to the lounge just give it a run uh yeah and look out for the ebay link if you've come here from ebay thanks ever so much for coming to visit hope you are um confident that you're going to get a good machine i will now shut up and take you into the lounge and we'll give it a run let's go